So you might be asking yourself, when would you need to do a line bore of a block? Well, if you've had damage, a spun bearing and stuff like that, it's usually a necessary time to do it. If you install aftermarket caps on a block, you're gonna have to do it. And sometimes just the condition of the block dictates that you have to do it. So you're gonna have to go through and do a line boring operation. You can now see we have the proper tool installed and it is a bit of a challenge having that much length to the diameter of the cut there and the sizing of the tool that you basically avoid chatter. That is gonna be one of the challenges in doing this type of operation, but uh, we think we've got the right numbers in place and we're gonna uh, try to do our first cut now and see how that works out. Now we've gone through and made the cut on the first one and we're just gonna go through and take a double look to see where we have a contact point if we are getting a 360 degree, which we're probably not gonna yet, but just to see where the contact is occurring. Of course, we've offset it a little bit in the bore so that we're taking the minimum amount off of the block and the maximum amount off of the cap to achieve the desired diameter that we're looking to accomplish here. And looks like we're pretty happy with that, so we're gonna just gonna go ahead and proceed to the next and hopefully get a similar result. And the second main here sounding like there's possibly a little bit less material coming out of this one as each of the bores is probably a bit different. One of the big advantages to line boring over line honing is in keeping a consistent diameter across all of the mains and actually keeping them directly in line with each other. So from the sounds of it, both the number one and the number five main had the most material to be removed on this initial cut. Going forward from here, they should all sound about the same. So let's take a look. So it's still about four and a half thousandths that need to be cut. And it's a good idea to check as you go down. And that second one there was probably closer to about five thousandths. So it's a little bit tighter than the top one. There's four and a half thousandths on the third. And this variance you're seeing from main to main is gonna basically go away as you continue to cut it on the line boring operation. They're all gonna be equal by the time this is finished within one or two ten thousandths of an inch. So Magnus has decided he's got four and a half thousandths to go. So he's gonna take out one thousandths here and just uh, see how that goes. Compared to the first cut, you can hear a bit more material coming out, meaning the contact patch is growing. Mainly gonna see that on the cap side instead of the block side if you're set up right. Just about that much that hasn't been touched yet. Uh, you can see the extraordinary finish that we're putting on here better than the factory original finish, so that is one nice plus to it, being able to control that. But we've got about maybe a thousandths uh, left in it. We're just double checking the setup tool now. And you can look at all of them and see that it's cutting exactly the same on these. One other thing important to note, you wanna have the main studs or bolts the same style, same brand that you're gonna be using when you do your final assembly. Of course, in this case, we do have a ARP main stud kit installed in this B18C block, and that gives us a little bit more strength to hold that whole bottom end together. Okay, so after our final pass, we're gonna go through and measure it right now, and, and looking at this first one here, just right under the zero, just a little bit over, which is where you wanna be. You wanna make sure there's no taper in it. As you go down, you're gonna get the same numbers, right in that one to two thousand, one to two tenths area, I should say. So now, we have a block that's been properly line bored. Everything with respect to the main journals and the crankshaft is now in line. The only variance here is, you know, two tenths of a thousandth of an inch at most between all of these. What that'll let us do is set our bearing clearances in such a way that we don't have to worry about going towards the big end to make up for anything. As long as our crankshaft's straight, We've got a straight main bearing axis to work on. Everything's gonna be precise. This will also be critical because this is what everything is gonna be based on for all of our future machining operations as we put the block in here, whether we decide to just bore it and hone it or sleeve the block. Everything needs to be exactly perpendicular. After we clean this block up, we'll just check it one more time with another uh, dial bore indicator and make sure we're, all of our numbers are coming back as we want them to.